Family Guy is missing something, and it's been missing it for a very long time. As beloved and successful as Family Guy is, the show still falls victim to what a lot of shows, artists, and musicians go through. Fans wanting to revert back to the earlier work, aka the golden age. Now it could be as simple as nostalgia. I watched these seasons as a kid, so when I watch them now, it brings me a sense of childhood that I look at with rose-colored glasses. Or maybe it's because the show was still new and fresh, so the storylines and jokes were too. But I don't think either of these are necessarily the case. Animated sitcoms like The Simpsons, South Park, and of course Family Guy work with and stay in pop culture because the show does just that. It moves with the world. A celebrity is currently going through a scandal. It will be discussed in the upcoming season. Politics, sports, all of it. So the formula doesn't need to change, just the content. And the Family Guy formula is almost the exact same as it's always been, but the characters are just completely different now. A lot of people say that the shift in Family Guy's quality started when Seth MacFarlane stopped being a writer on the show. This was around the time he started working on the Ted movies and was establishing himself as an actor and director. And then even more people say it was after the infamous Life of Brian episode where they tried to replace one of the most important characters to the series. But I think the problem has been a slow burning one that started around season 6. A season that wasn't even completely finished due to the writer's strike and more importantly, this is where the show started experimenting with storytelling. Make sure to like and subscribe and now let's look way too deep into a cartoon series. It's almost undeniable at this point that these are the best seasons of Family Guy. I mean, if you look online for articles and videos ranking all of the seasons, the general consensus is that season four is the all time best. On IMBD's ranking of all the episodes that go off of user rating, 12 of the top 20 comes from this era, and then two episodes are where they literally time travel back to the early days. Everyone likes to chalk this up to, like I said, nostalgia and or the fact that the writing was still new and fresh, but some of the best writing, again going off of general audience review and of course my own opinion, comes from episodes like And Then They Were Fewer, Road to the Multiverse, one of the best animated Christmas episodes with Road to the North Pole, Forget Me Not, and so many more. So it's not like they stopped writing good content and Seth hadn't even left the writing team yet. But what happened was they lost their place in the world of animated sitcoms. There's a spectrum of where all of these shows fall on, but to make it easier to explain, I'll just use the big three. On one end you have The Simpsons, only the first 12 seasons though, and then on the far other end you have South Park. Two completely different shows when it comes to their comedy, setup, and storytelling, but what they each have in common is they are the most well written. One's wholesome with drier but hilarious humor, the other is raunchy shock humor but one of the most intelligent shows when it comes to discussing real life, and then you have Family Guy right in the middle. The golden age of Family Guy falls on The Simpsons side. The show was originally a play on the Simpsons setup, typical TV family with wholesome moments and stories, but it was viewed as the raunchy version, bringing it closer to the South Park side. It was the perfect balance. You get the best part of the early Simpsons but with darker and edgier humor, but the writing was never good enough to be as edgy as South Park because when Family Guy did get edgy, it was usually met with a lot of backlash with how they dealt with certain topics. So you could argue that the shift was when Family Guy started moving closer to the South Park side, experimenting with their writing and trying to create these elaborate stories that have only worked a handful of times. Now yes, like the aforementioned episodes, when it worked, it was some of the best the show had to offer. But the last time it really worked was when Seth was still writing, around season 10 or 11. So instead of carrying over what made it so special in the first place, when it was on this side of the spectrum, it forgot what it was and it placed itself on this side of the spectrum. Of course, the obvious evidence for a shift in the series is the first episode of the sixth season, the first Star Wars parody, which forever changed the landscape of the show. Like I said, it's where they started moving further away from their place on the spectrum. This did bring us the Clue episode, but it also brought us the Sherlock Holmes parody. But I want to focus more on the start of the character shift around this season. The last episode of the Golden Age, which happens to be my favorite episode of all time, gives us a perfect starting point in the shift of Family Guy. Meet the Quagmires. The story follows Peter and Brian as for the last time they are truly man and his best friend. While going back in time multiple times, they alter the future to where Lois marries Quagmire instead of Peter while his party lifestyle left him married to Molly Ringwald of The Breakfast Club. The jokes are hilarious, the concept is perfect, 
but we see the heart of the show on full display. Peter has shown his love and affection to the family before after being the worst husband and father possible, but when their existence in his life is going to go away, we see how much he truly cares about them. Literally going back in time and beating up his best friend in order to prove his love to Lois and ensure that his children are still in his life. The first five seasons are filled with moments like these. Yeah, Peter is usually being a piece of sh and ends up having to fix the problem that he created, but his behavior was excused because of the much apparent love he had for his family when it came down to the wire. This applies to Lois too. She cheated on Peter with Bill Clinton, but it led to a more wholesome moment at the end of the episode. A lot of the time, she wasn't the best mother, but she was the only one to help Meg break out of her shell and gave her two episodes where she was the main character, and they were great stories. Back in the day, the good outweighed the bad. As season six and on continued, we saw less and less of these moments, but when we did, it just didn't hit the same. Brian is a shell of himself now, and his relationship with Stewie almost seems forced. Peter has not only neglected his children, his wife, and even his friends, but his relationship with Brian is non-existent now. By removing the wholesomeness from the show, it started changing its characters and their interpersonal relationships, most of them for the worse. But the main one that held the show together is what's ruining the current era of the show, Peter and Lois. The writers have completely ruined Lois's character to the point where her presence on screen gives me a sense of existential dread. The years of Peter's actions now actually affect her in the storyline, whereas before, they were always excused. We would get these constant reminders of their youthful, loving past. She used to be free-spirited, fun, adventurous, and would be the glue that kept Peter together. The show wasn't taking itself too seriously, so it was able to reset to the status quo every episode, giving us the impression that no matter what, Lois still loved Peter, and they still had a fun side to him that connected them in the first place. Those first five seasons, they were very similar to their counterpart, Homer and Marge. By making constant jokes, episodes, and running gags catered towards the effect of Peter's actions on the marriage, that just started to become the norm. They started taking themselves too serious, and now we have multiple full episodes all about the deteriorating mental state from a wife and mother who feels stuck in her life. And when Peter's not up to his usual antics, he's been reduced to an unsatisfying husband that Lois constantly belittles. There's no more genuine moments of Peter and Lois rekindling their past. Ever since the Hurricane episode, there's no real attempts at bringing Meg and Lois back together. Together. Lois and Chris's relationship is only used to make a few jokes throughout the episode. And then what happened to how close Brian and Lois used to be? I know I'm probably going all over the place and I'm taking this show too serious, but look at these three episodes. They are the ones that are talking about such serious stuff. Prescription heroin where Lois becomes addicted to Brian's pain medication. Customer of the week where the most exciting thing in her life is going to the coffee shop where she thinks all of the employees like her and then throw it away where she's inspired by a book to only keep things in her life that bring her joy, to then proceed to get rid of absolutely everything and everyone in her life. The shot of her in the all-white house as she descends into madness is just the best way I can describe what they have reduced her character to. The show, just like her, feels soulless. Even though the show seems too far gone to fix, I think it can still be salvaged. Maybe they could reinvent this show, but I don't really think that's necessary with all the other animated adult shows that we have now. But what they need to do is add more love and wholesomeness, rewrite Lois's character to a similar version of what she used to be, use her for the better, somehow try and mend Brian and Peter's relationship, and then stop trying to parody every movie and stop making new versions of the same time travel story. Write more wholesome, grounded in reality, family-oriented stories and do what you did best. Just be the raunchy version of The Simpsons. So, what do you guys think? Am I just looking way too deep into this, or do you guys also feel a little sad or messed up after you watch one of the most beloved characters being written into an existential corner? Do you guys also feel like something is missing? I'm also very curious as to what you guys consider the best season or the best era of Family Guy. And of course, I wanna know your favorite episode of all time as well, so please let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you wanna hear me talk about more Family Guy or other animated sitcoms, again, let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon for another video. And as always, thanks for watching.